Oh, look at that. There he is. There he is. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and he's got drawings. You yeah. gotta wear a mask nowadays. So I, I got my mask. It. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Good evening, fiends. Welcome to another episode of Sinister Parlor Podcast. I'm Zombie Barbie, and tonight I am joined with my awesome, amazing co-host, the one and only Bud Vino. Oh, we in the Cole Show 2, air date of the show, August 22nd, 2020, my friend. And we're bringing the heat as we did in show one with Mr. Chris Duran in show two. Just as incredible, the one, the only, the affable, lovable. Mr. Shelley Finkelstein himself from Father 13, Part 3 from 1982, Mr. Larry Zerner. Stop fooling around, man. Hello. Hey. Hey, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you so Thank much. You, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Larry, if I could, before we get started, um... Everybody out there, we're so lucky to have people like Larry Zerner on because not only is he such a big, he's an icon and a staple in, in terms of the Friday the 13th franchise and horror in general, but he's been so gracious and made this so fun. And I've had the pleasure of interviewing Larry before, and I told him this is going to be even better. I'm looking forward to everything, all your stories, and I know everybody out there is too. Here. Thank you, Larry, for coming on. I was telling my friends that we were having Larry on. They're like, oh, my God, Shelly's coming on. So, like, everybody knows who you are. It's so that, cool. Well, that's amazing because I would think people are like, who? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> yeah. I think you should have been one of the survivors, Larry. Yeah. A lot of people hold that view with Chris. No. 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 you got to die. That's, that's the fun part. <laughs> that's the fun part is dying. But see, I wanted to see what Jason did to you. You kind of got gypped, Larry, because they just showed it. Everyone thought you were fooling. Yeah, poor well, guy. But, you know, being in a Friday the 13th movie and not dying is like being in a porno and not having sex. <laughs> <laughs> awesome analogy, Larry. That is a brilliant analogy. <laughs> Wonderful. One. <laughs> wow. Awesome. I'm literally speechless, and that was incredible. Great. Um, oh, Larry, you were awesome. This was back way back in 1982, and if we could real quick, Larry, because this was when the 3D craze, that, as some people most know out there, Friday 3 was in 3D. Mm -hmm. What was that like compared to, you know, just was the process? The process was very slow and complicated. We were using a brand new 3D process that was developed just for this movie, so no one had ever done it before. Oh, wow. uh, and it was not a it was not the red blue like in the old movies. We were one of the we were the second movie that used the polarized three um, D, so the glasses were clear when you went to the theater. Um, and it just everything took forever. Um, the whole shoot took three months, and you know the first movie was filmed in one month. So that'll give you some idea of just every setup was two hours minimum to you do a shot. You know, to the reverse angle, that's a two hour setup to, to, to get it done. It was it was it was really interesting. But it was my first movie, so I didn't I didn't really have anything to compare it to. It, Larry, my wife and I have talked a lot about kind of your story, even from when I first interviewed you. I always had a fascination. We always say Rhiannon, everything happens for a reason. Yes. And for the folks out there, Larry, how did you get the role of folks that don't know of in five thirteen part two part three? Well, so I had, uh, I was a struggling actor. I, I was studying theater, going to college. I was a freshman in college, wanting to be an actor. Had acted in high school, done, you know, but had an agent, but hadn't done anything professionally yet. Um, and I had a job uh, handing out movie tickets, which is something we do in Los Angeles. You hand out tickets to the test screenings. Uh, so I was at Westwood on a Saturday night in January of 82, uh, handing out tickets to a movie no one had ever heard of called The Road Warrior. Um, and, uh, these two people came up to me, um, and they said, uh, excuse me, are you an actor? And, you know, it was like, that's a question no one's ever asked. I'm like, you know, yes, I'm an actor. I, and they're like... Well, we wrote this movie, and we think you'd be perfect for it. And it was that was the 
Carol Watson and Marty Catrasso, who were the writers of the movie, and they saw me with the, you know, fat, with the big pro and Mr. Geek, and they were like, that's Shelly. That is exact. And it really, if they, it was like, it was like I was the character they had imagined come to life. Um, and so, uh, you know, they said, we, we wrote this movie, Friday 13th, part three, and we want you to audition. And, and so I gave them my agent's infer information, and I was like, well, that was interesting. And, and that was Saturday, and then on, I, on, I remember Monday, no call. And I was like, oh, you know. And then Tuesday, I got a call to come down and audition. Wow. Um, so I still had to audition and, and beat out. I don't know who the other people were. Probably Sean Penn and uh, Johnny Depp was up for that. Right. But, but well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, sure I'm sure yeah, heard that. But, uh, but beat them all and uh, got the role. That's awesome. That's like every actor's dream is for someone to come up and say, is. we want you. It's Lana Turner and Larry Zerner. Oh. We were the two that got discovered. Well, you you were definitely Shelly, uh, Larry, in the sense, see, the the, the issue with Friday the 13th and in particular part three is that we're not supposed to like the, you know, we get to know Shelly. You know, mm -hmm. Shelly had that vulnerability and that, that humanness that most of us, all of us have, that insecurity and wanting to fit in. And yeah. we got to know Shelly a little bit. So it's kind of heartbreaking. Although Jason did get his mask for the first time ever. People don't know from Mr. Shelly. Yeah. Right. It's Shelly's That's mask. Something about it. Here it is. Shelly's mask. He brought it. Oh, and yes. uh, um, he, Jason takes it, and history is made. Hell yeah. So you're a history maker. That is awesome. In a way. <laughs> By the way, this, so is, cool. this is not the mask from the movie, just in case anyone's out. <laughs> oh. Well, I tell you, it, that is something awesome, though, for, for because there are literally millions and millions of people around the world. Mm -hmm. Um that are, that know who Jason is on the mask and really that it all started. From it is, it, yeah. I mean, it's amazing that you could show anyone this and they know, they know right. exactly what movie you're talking about. They, oh, yeah. they know who this is. And that is uh, uh, a really, a, a, you know, it's iconic. It is iconic. And, that, and, and having a part in, in, in that small part in film history is, is great. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. See, I didn't realize it was 3D until it started kind of shooting out at me weird. I'm like, oh, that's odd. And then I was talking to you, bud, and you're like, oh, yeah, I was in 3D. I was like, that's why the wording looked like that, you know, because obviously I don't have the glasses, but it was really cool looking at yeah, the, 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 the The problem is, it, it really is, the people have seen the movie and people who are, who are watching or this, and, and if you've you've seen the movie and you've only seen it in 2D on your television. Yeah. You really haven't seen the movie. It's really a movie meant to be seen in a theater in 3D. And if you ever get the opportunity to watch it in a theater in 3D, you really should. It's it's a really fun experience. It's so much fun. All those shows, all those shots in the movie that you watch, that, that are made for the 3D, the, the things like the snake coming out mm -hmm. and the, popcorn and the and the yo-yo and there's just things like it, just, it starts with the the Harold takes the pole and he sticks it in the camera and it's it looks great like it really comes out into the to the audience and but if you're watching it on VHS it's not the same. Or no one's watching on VHS anymore. They're <laughs> watching on television. On uh, Hulu. <laughs> uh, it, it has it, it, it has no. It, it, it's it's it, it doesn't do anything, and so it, it it takes the movie down. But those who have seen the movie in 3D definitely will up it in their rankings of the Friday the Thirteenth movie. Well, yeah, the first time I ever saw it, um, I was very young. It came out in '82, so I was probably you know, seven years old, eight or seven when it came out. But the first time I ever saw it was when they played it. They used to have, you know, when we were young, they had those, you know, Friday night. It was only about three or four channels back then. But it came on. I remember seeing all those shots, but it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because I didn't realize it was originally 3D. I'm like, well, wow, this is kind of different. You know, everything's coming right at me. But I would, I've never seen it in the theater, and that's the experience I'd, I'd, love, to, I'd love to have. Yeah, it's very, it's hard to show in a theater. You need it. Yeah, you need a. Uh, I don't have you need one. a. Um, you need shirt. a special screen. At least for the moment, you need a special screen to to show it. So when they do uh, have screen, they have screens. Like in, in in Los Angeles, there's only been three screenings since the initial run in 38 years. Like 
that in Los Angeles. It's so hard. You have to be doing a special 3D thing to do it. It's expensive. Now, what I hear is that, uh, you know, Shot Factory has announced a new box set of all the movies coming out in October, and that will have a new 3D transfer that will play on 3D televisions. And also, if you have a, um, a, a VR, if you have a VR, like a, 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 a PlayStation VR, you can watch it in 3D in your VR. Oh, oh that's uh, cool. That's what they're with me. So, um, wow. That's incredible news. Thanks for, I didn't know about that. My youngest is very much into the VR thing right now. And I'm, I'm trying to learn it. I'm trying to keep up with it. It's cool. But yeah. that's great because, yeah, I've seen, as you know, Larry, they released um, Friday three years ago with the regular, you know, old-fashioned 3D glasses. It, it just doesn't work right. I've tried many times to watch it in that way, but it's, oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. So I'm really looking forward to this as a, as a child of this, a, a man-child now of these movies. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that transfer, sir. Right. A man-child. Um, I really love, love, love the music. Like, as soon as you turn the movie on and that score comes on, you're just instantly pumped to watch it. I kept replaying it because the music is just incredible. The disco theme? The, I was, love, it was yeah. Disco? That, that's my favorite. I lo- Yeah, I liked it. I was like, oh, this is, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, Friday 3 is, I've seen, I've seen them all so many times. But Friday 3 is definitely, I've seen the most. There's something about now, it's this intangible almost. It's. It, it, I know it's because the characters you kind of get to know them. It, it, it's for some reason I love it. I think it's Richard Brooker's portrayal too, and how likable you all are, and the chemistry of the characters, and just it's just a fantastic movie. Mm-hmm. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the kills. I loved the kills in it. Yeah, there's great kill. I mean, the the the, the, the harpoon in the eye. The yeah. the. the, the Dan, when Andy gets killed, split in two. That's great. The eyeball, the eyeball popping, was so great in 3D. Oh, okay. uh, that I remember the first seeing it opening night, and I didn't know about that because you know you it's in the script, but you know you read this, you know it's just like oh he gets his head crushed, but and then you see it, and the eyeball pops out, and and it yeah, right out of it. the whole crowd just jumped. It's, it was it's super fun. Well, when I was doing my I, I've seen it a million times, but I always like to watch it again. I was watching it this afternoon, just kind of freshen up because anything I missed it. The, aunt, the scene where Andy gets split in half, I was actually leaving a voice message for Andy. <laughs> yeah. And it was coming, and right at the end of the message, I was, it was about the show, and I said, And Jason is about to split Andy in F and half, and I let it play. And <laughs> so that's how we're starting. Yeah. It's been good, Larry. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and I want to ask you. If I could, Rian, and if I could ask him this, we, um, Chris Duran had mentioned, because Steve Miner was the director of H2O, as he was Friday 3, and I've heard really good things about Steve Miner. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, the way, and, and I, and I, I want to see how your experience was on the set with everything, especially with the stress of the 3D. Well, yeah, I mean, this was Steve's second movie he had done for Friday 2. Um, he was under a lot of pressure... There was a lot, the 3D was a real problem. We, we actually, we, the first thing we filmed was the scene at the store and then they, they just threw it away and we shut down for a week and then we came back because uh, they, it wasn't right. So Steve spent really much more time dealing with this, the technical issue of the 3D than dealing with the actors. We were really on our own doing, to do what we had to do and we didn't get, you know, we would do a take and, and then we're like, oh, how was that? And Steve would be looking at the 3D stuff, so yes. we didn't get a lot of guidance there. But I, I mean, I, I mean, I like Steve, and, and you know, he, he turned right. out a great movie. But he was so the the 3D was so really the forefront of what was going on that the the actors' performances were taking a, a right. Well, I'm sure it must have been so overwhelming, being that it was so new and so. As you said, he was under so much pressure. All you folks were. Did you feel it? Did you realize how big, because Friday wanted to do it, how big this was going to be and was at that time? No, it wasn't big at the time. I mean, it wasn't. We were the third movie in a thing. The second movie hadn't done, had done okay. It wasn't, it wasn't a big hit. 
Jason wasn't an icon. Um, so it wasn't that we were a small movie. The budget was four million. Um, it wasn't that. Uh, I mean, that's a. I mean, for I don't know what that would turn out to be in two twenty two thousand twenty dollars. Probably you know twenty right sixteen to twenty. Not you know, but really because of the three D because of just of the time. Not that they spent lots of money on things. You know, we had mostly it was mostly this one set, the 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 barn and the and the, and the cabin are one or one place. They're physical places, so it's, we were just there, except for the store. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah. If I could ask you, we when Richard Brooker, we heard when we talked to Chris Graham last night. He liked to stay away from people. We heard that about Ted White and Friday Four as well. Was Richard Brooker that way, or was he kind of a joker and hang out with you guys? He did not hang with us. We'd see him, and uh, he would be around, but no, we didn't. He never hung with us. He he was he did his own thing. You know, I actually don't have any scenes with Richard. Right. If we don't have the kill scene, so I never even you know other than seeing him walking around with his makeup. <laughs> um, I, that was it. I, in fact, I don't think I knew what he looked like in real life. <laughs> right, right. Wow. Cause I just, cause Jason with a pipe hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, well, we would get there early. We 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 go into our you know the the you know the cast makeup train you know get our stuff and he had a whole he had, he was in the effects makeup house so we'd never see him. He'd just come out in, in full makeup. Oh, just to do the scenes and stuff. Kind of like the real Jason. Just yeah, come yeah. out every now and again. Yeah, yeah. That's when you kill you. <laughs> that was crazy. Um, I liked whenever uh, you ran over that guy's bike. When you got like, uh -huh. you got all brave and you just like whip <laughs> Ali. around and run the bike over and shit. I was like, yeah, don't take no shit. Ali was going to kick your ass. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. They wouldn't let me drive. They're like, no, no. I, I didn't know how to drive a stick. I remember them. They're like, "Go!" Yeah, you know, I had to learn to drive a stick just so I could drive a little bit. But like <laughs> backing up into the uh, bikes, someone else did that because oh, okay. you know. I, I mean, they didn't want me to run over. I probably would have run over him. <laughs> you then, all uh, see, into him. <laughs> yeah, see, therein lies the some of the arc of Shelley, where you you like him. He has he's standing up for himself. Not this yeah. time. He went too far this time, right, Larry? Yeah, that was fun. There was there was a scene in the original script. There was actually a scene where they um, the the bike the bikers then chase chase everyone, chase me and, and Vera in their in their bikes and um, and I there was a I think there was a like there was a champagne bottle and I popped the cork and that um, you know that makes them you know like a bullet and that makes them fly off the bike and then I think I think in the script like. I stopped short, and he flipped as a you know a flip over the bike, I, flip over, and I just think they realized there's just no way they were going to do that. <laughs> but you, been, you must have been psyched when you first read it, though. Wow! Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I, oh, I get to know. I get to know a car chase. Fantastic. <laughs> Young kid, first movie. Woo! He's like crap. Yeah, yeah. It's a stick shift. <laughs> Oh, man. So with the windows, this is kind of a dumb question, but like how the windows break out like that, is that real glass or do they put something different in for that? So it, if, you, if you look at it, you don't actually see him break the glass. It's there's a me and then the fist and then you, like the glass, they threw like this the little plastic glass, they threw it on me, it cuts the... Like the glass flying, and then you see the fist through the window. You never actually see the fist break the window. Oh. So that's how they do that. The brilliance of editing. editing. It's just editing. Um, okay. There's, 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 they never actually break it on camera. Oh. See, now, okay, now that makes sense. Because I was like, oh, man, I wonder if that's real glass that just shot all over him. <laughs> no, they would not use real. But, yeah, they would not use real glass. <laughs> now, now, I know Larry... You got back into acting recently after winning 2007's Last Man Standing, one, uh, one versus Zombie, right? What was that like? Being an intro, not just being on it, but winning, being the last man standing. Wow. 
Uh, yeah, well, that's a good day when, uh, you know, winning, uh, you know, not <laughs> winning a quarter million dollars is certainly a, 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 a I'm so happy for you, bud. That's awesome. uh, I, you know, without even knowing you, I'm like, Shelly, I think a lot of people were cheering you on. Knowing what you did. Yeah, you know, people were like, you're yeah, Shelly, won a bunch of money. Yeah, and, and it was, but it was actually, um, like, two of the people on, one of the, two of the people on the show were Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter, who were, you know, Ken Jennings is the all-time Jeopardy champ. Brad is the second all-time Jeopardy champ. Uh, there were a bunch of mi- people who had won the million dollars on Millionaire. There were a bunch of, I mean, it was a, it was a, there was a stacked deck there, and, and to right. come out on top of them, I mean, I've always been sort of a trivia buff, so really to win that was, it was just fun to win, and then, damn, they gave me a whole bunch of money. That was fun. Well, it's one of those things, too, that no one could ever take from you, Larry. You know, it's one of those things, it really, your life has been like a movie, too, in that way. You know, from, from, you know, that whole way you were discovered to, you know, everything that you've done. Uh, you're a, you're an, enter- a, an attorney out in L.A., right? Uh, an entertainment attorney. You've yeah. had some big cases. Yeah. Uh, really done amazing things, Larry. And now, uh, you got back into acting in 2013, I believe it was, with uh, Knights of Bad Aston. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so that's exciting. So I want to see some more stuff from you, Larry. You're such a good guy. Doesn't he, Leanne, what I tell you out there, he's such a warm fun yeah. guy, you'll forget you're even on the air. Yeah. He just has such great energy. He really does. Well, I, I, I love being able, I love acting. I stayed in SAG. I'm still a SAG member. Uh, a friend of mine was the producer on uh, Nights About Astom and Joe Lynch was the director and Joe's a big Friday 13th fan and so he was happy to, to give me a role and, and that, that that was a fun movie. If you haven't seen it, it's you can stream it for free. It's got, it's got Peter Dinklage and Steve Zahn and, and Jimmy oh, Simpson. Cool. It's, it's, it's a fun movie. They, 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 they sort of ran out of money and then, so they had some problems, but, uh, it's a good, it's a good watch. Well, yeah, uh, I, 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 I've read about it too. And I read some of those issues, but, but all in all, it seems like it's a fun ride. I'm definitely going to check it. I believe I, don't quote me, I believe I saw it on Prime. Um, I think that's yeah, why it's I'm been on Prime. Work. It's on Prime or it's, yeah, well, well, maybe on something else. Yeah. I'm actually in another movie now. Uh, called, well, it's on, streaming on Showtime, The Killing of Nicole Brown Simpson. Um, oh, oh, directed by, we're going uh, to have to check that out. Directed by Dan Farrens, who directed uh, Crystal Lake Memories. Yes, I was going to say, Crystal Lake Memories, which was absolutely fantastic. If you, if anyone wants to sit down, that is, what about Larry, about almost seven hours of yeah. awesomeness. Friday the 13th, awesomeness. Really. It's fantastic, right. It's so absolutely, I'm, I'm, yeah. So you can see me in that movie. Uh, it's uh, streaming on Showtime. Is that awesome? Movie? And we're going to see Larry and more things too. I, I absolutely can feel that. And Larry, what in in 1982? I see. I know you worked with some big names. Tracy Savage, who went on, she became and she she was a big name before with the O.J. Simpson case. Right. I know that. Uh, Dana Kimball, Chris. I, I'll be honest. I had a crush on Dana Kimball when I was a kid. When sure. it was just something girl next door about her. Uh, when I was a kid, it was always like, ooh, what's he going to do? Uh, and uh, I met Richard Brooker, Paul Back, uh, who did a really good um, documentary on Friday the 13th 3. Uh, he was the narrator, I believe, of the, of the documentary on Friday the 3, Paul Back, um, which is pretty good. It was a short one, um, but that was pretty good, too. And some other people, I know that um, Gloria Charles passed away recently. She was Fox. Yes. As did Pearl Waters, who was Mrs. Sanchez, who was your crush's mother. Right. In the movie. And Vera did not have snubbed you, Larry, or maybe she wouldn't have got that harpoon in the eye, being nosy, looking through your wallet. I, I think uh, we're all going to die one way or the other. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I think you're right about I don't that. know that, that hooking up with Shelly would have been the move. Like, oh. oh my God, she hooked up with Shelly and she got killed by Jason. That is not right. a good thing. Not a good <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but, but, yeah. yeah, you're right. Be careful! Be careful what you will, all right. If I, I if Shelly hooked up with Vera, that's a really good day for Shelly, and he doesn't mind getting killed by this. right. <laughs> right. He got dumped by. He got he got turned down, and then yeah, and then I love the little at the end, bitch, when she's walking, she's walking away. <laughs> I love that. You know, I heard some people talking about that, and you know, it it. it so I got to tell you this little story about the bitch because it comes across very bitter and and very, like someone said it was very incel. Like Shelly's an incel. 
And really, what was going on back then? That was an ad lib in the in the on the set. It was not in the script. Uh-oh. What was going on was I was I knew the scene was done, and he was about to yell cut. And I was a big Saturday Night Live fan. And if you watched Saturday Night Live at the time, they had a character Emily Latella, played by Gilda Radner, who would go on the news uh, weekend broad, uh, update, and then she would she would not understand. She said, "I don't know what's going on with." Violins on television, and uh, uh, and then uh, Jane Curtin would correct her, and it's not it's violence, not violence. And she'd go, "Oh, never mind." And then she'd go, "Bitch," to <laughs> Jane Curtin. That was a that was an Emily Latella thing, and that's what. And so we're on the set, and we're like, I see the scene's done. You know, we're he's going to go cut. So I go, "Bitch," and I'm doing it in my head. I'm doing Emily Latella, and the and everyone with the crew laughs because. <laughs> And then, and then Steve said, do it again and, and keep it. And, he, and so we kept it. Nice. But, uh, no, Shelly's I mean, doing an Emily Latella impersonation. He's not really <laughs> being mean. Yeah, Shelly, yeah. back then, too, was a very normal, you know, in terms of those insecurities and, and, and for that age and stuff, too. Shelly was not an insult. He was, he was very much just a normal guy that was trying to do what all of us do, trying to make relationships and trying to, you know, figure things out. So... And I, and I don't think, too, when you, if you know the, the movie and you hear the way you say bitch, it really doesn't, to me, doesn't come across as bitter, because I can kind of, you can feel the character. You know, it's kind of like, it's, like it's, you got punched in the gut a little bit. You know, so it's not really directed to her. It's, it's almost not. in the air, like almost son yeah. of a bitch. You know, like yeah. bitch. It, you know, it's kind of like that, too. So I think it works on a, a few different levels. So Yeah, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, I don't want people to think uh, Shelly's an incel. He's not an incel. <laughs> no, Shelly might be a lot of things. Yeah, oh, I felt so but bad when he died and nobody believed him. I'm like, he's like suffering right there, and she's not even helping him when he's all reaching out for her. She's like, stop it, Shelly. Oh well, that's uh, uh, she realized that's Shelly. Yeah, <laughs> he cried wolf too so, many times. <laughs> Larry, can I ask you? Since you got this role at the time, which I assume must have been like a dream come true, a role of a lifetime. Yeah. What was it like? going back to your normal life? Was everybody like, oh, what was it like? Well, I, I didn't go back to my, I mean, normal life. I mean, right. I was, because, so right, I, right, right. I mean, what was the reaction from people? Yeah, yeah, I, right. Well, it was fun because the movie was number one for a couple weeks. It was a big hit. It made, uh, I think, you know, $38 million in 1982 dollars, which is probably about $100 million today. And that's wow. for, you know, for a movie like that, that's, that's a that's a big hit, okay. and and you know for a while I, you know when I'd go out on the street people would recognize me and that was fun you know it's, it's you know when you're an actor it's fun to get recognized and I remember going to Six Flags Magic Mountain like a few weeks after the movie opened with my friends I'd be walking down the line and I could hear you know you could hear people ah oh, Shelly oh. you know it's like so I had that little touch of fame it was kind of fun to be famous and like, and, you know, it was, for a while it was every day, and then it was every other day, and then it was once a week, and then once a month, and then now maybe once a year somebody will recognize me. Uh, <laughs> and then you know, I'm out of the, out the street. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's one of those things, again, that it, the reason, too, is you're, you're probably one of the, besides Jason, I would dare to say you're the most recognizable and recognized character in Friday the 13th Free, some, and, and almost a whole series, besides some of the staples, Tommy Jarvis's and things like that, but, I mean, Shelly is, is synonymous with Friday the 13th, people know who Shelly is. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, Shelly has uh, become a, a very well-recognized character. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that people, that 38 years later, that people talk about it argue about it or happy about it i mean it's weird because when i was a kid i i went through a big horror movie phase where i was into you know frankenstein you know the universal monsters right frankenstein dracula Wolfman. and now right from when i was a kid the period of time is the same as from now to the front to 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 Friday 30 part three in essence for this new generation, we're the Universal Monsters, Jason and Freddy and 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 Michael Myers, right? That those are the that's the same thing. Uh, so it's like being in you know Bride of Frankenstein or, or Curse of the Wolfman. Mm-hmm. 
That's a good way to put it, yeah, because if you think about it, that's true. Yeah. Well, they, well that makes us all feel real old, huh, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no. No, but it's true. It's iconic. And these are things, as you said, we're all going to, you think we're all going to die. We think so. And the thing is, is that when we're gone, you know, it's someone like you, I mean, how many people can say they left something, you know, that made a mark, you know, and, and on multiple levels? And not just that, but even irrespective of it, the money you won, which is awesome, <laughs> just the ability for you to go out and show your knowledge and kind of, you know, that you were a trivia buff and people get to experience that other side of you. Um, you know, and for us fans, that was great. And I think that was, it's kind of like when you won too, it was really, it felt like a win, a win for the good guy. You know, Shelly... Shelly got it. You know, he, he beat out everybody. Okay, I, 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 I finally got the girl. Yeah. Yeah, the money. <laughs> I had the girl. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, you know what I mean, though. You know, Shelly finally gets the big win. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it was it was fantastic. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what made you get into um, entertainment, being an entertainment lawyer? Have you always had that, you know... <laughs> Uh, you know, Hollywood basically said, um, we're not going to let you make a living as an actor. So, uh, and my, my dad was a lawyer and he said he'd pay for law school and mm -hmm. I had nothing else to do. So I was like, well, it's something to do. And turns out I, I turned out I had an affinity for it and I'm good at it and I really enjoy it. So I'm, 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 I'm happy I did it. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, you were given that opportunity and you ran with it. Because you obviously are good, and anyone anyone that wants to go check out Larry, some of Larry's record, it, it speaks for itself on some of the things that you've done. So, again, people can you you know you can lead a horse to water, right? But you got you can't make a drink, and you did. Uh, so again, yeah, no, it's good, and, I, and and now I represent a number of people in the horror business, and so uh, which is great, and uh, people like Dan Farrens. Um, I'm I, I was Hague's lawyer for some stuff, uh, so, so I get to meet. Great people, and it's super interesting, and you know, I get to get people money, which is always fun, yeah. uh, and I love it. So, if you're out there and you're watching, and you need a lawyer, or you're well, to deal with we're you. gonna keep that in mind, Rhiannon, yeah. because as the show yeah. grows, <laughs> that's right. We're gonna, we're gonna, hilarious. He's marketing himself to us and doesn't even realize it. Yeah, like, we know where we're going. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're so. higher. Heck yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. We gotta gotta get nice so, and big, so we need a lawyer. So you, <laughs> you're still doing some acting. I, I know uh, we we talked when we talked to Chris Duran. He's doing some scripts and things like that. I know Chris watches our show, so Chris, check whether you have to keep them in mind too for projects you have, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's always good to uh, uh, to network and connect with good people, and you're both very good people. Mm -hmm. So see what happens in the future. I'm quite sure you'll be doing other work, Larry. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Larry, uh, Rihanna, do you have any more questions for Larry before we let him go? Um, would you, so, has there ever been any talk of bringing back some of the characters? You know, like how, I mean, I know there's been a lot of legal stuff kind of going on lately with Friday the 13th, but have they ever talked about bringing back some of the characters somehow or doing like a whole new type of film with you guys or anything to where? No, well, no. Well, you know, they haven't, they haven't get the, you know, they have this big lawsuit that's been going on. Yeah. Uh, I've been, you know, th this is really because I'm a copyright lawyer and, and, you know, this is really, I've been really following it closely and I, and I tweet about it. So if you're watching and you want to know what's going on, follow me on Twitter Zer at Zerner Law and I I'm, I'm giving people updates and explaining what's going on. But right now, you know, they, they haven't done anything, you know, since the remake. Mm -hmm. At one point they were going to make a new movie and they came close, and then they stopped. That was, but that was like ten years ago. And since then, or maybe six well, years ago. But since then, nothing. I mean, there's no. I'm thinking we should do something where Larry is so frustrated that he snaps and, and embodies. It's so funny. He starts to pick off. All the people, one by one, responsible for all these. Well, Shelly, Shelly is dead. So. Well, that's why we said Larry. Larry will do it, but, you. but as the, as the, you won't realize that you'll kind of blend the Shelly and Larry real life and fantasy. 
Or is Sheldon I don't know. dead? We'll, Maybe he's we'll think of something, Larry. <laughs> with all, with all, the, uh, with all the remakes and yeah. reboots, yeah. We've, got to, we've got to think of something organic. It's, something it's disappointing that they can't, but it's disappointing that they can't make more Friday the 13th movies. People want them. I mean, you saw what Blumhouse was able to do with Halloween. Mm -hmm. You know, they got two more coming out, which I'm sure are great. And uh, they should be doing the same with crazy. Jason. Yeah. And they can't, you know. So it's a shame. it is a shame because I think they, uh, as you said, I think it could have been, it could have been rolling at this point like it was, uh, as you said, the way Halloween's kind of resurrected itself, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Friday, you know, could do the same in terms of perpetuating what's already there. And as you said, the fans are longing for it. You see yeah. fans getting angry. Tons I of mean, fan films. Too. With the video game too, one of the biggest things people loved was you being part of the video game even. I mean, it was really gaining even more momentum for the newer fans as well. It was so great to be able to go in the, in the video game. I, I met the guys who made the video game way when they were still developing it and we became friends and um, they, they, it's they incredible. Getting, and then they, they, they put me in the game and I was so happy oh, uh, to be in a video game. Is That's really, you know, bucket list. It's so good. Well, that was, yeah, and that's a huge thing. People flipped out. That they loved it. it. You know what's great, too, is it gave a lot of kids that weren't familiar with some of the older Friday the 13th movies, that even the ones that might not have known that, got reintroduced. Yeah. So it really did. And the people that already knew who you were just flipped out. Yeah. And it's because they, they, there's a couple other characters from the movie. You know, there's a Fox character. There's the sort of a Chuck character. But me and Tom Matthews were the only... Friday the 13th actors who got to go back and do our own voices. Oh. So that was that was fun. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I played it yeah, one Tom time Matt and I died. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I played it one time and I died within like five minutes. Yeah, it takes some practice. I'm not good. It's a little practice. It's fun, though. <laughs> that Tom, Tom Matthews, uh, Tommy and Friday the 13th Part 6 from 1986, he seems like a pretty good guy, too, and that was really cool to see him in the game as well. Tom is a great guy, and we're, we've become friends, and Tom actually has a contracting business, and so I've hired him, and he, and he comes and he helps fix my house. <laughs> well, that's good, because I had messaged him. If Tom watched it out there, I had messaged him a few days ago, and I said, hey, we'll just do what I have on it. I've never interviewed him, but I said, I would love to have you on a big Jason 6 fan, a big Friday series fan, but if you decide not to come on, I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to be a big fan, so... Uh, hopefully we can get him on too and hear his experience. It's good to know that you guys are tight like that, and uh, he obviously must be a good person because you're. Uh, you're He's great. Off. He's great. Talking about the huge chili, Larry. Sorry, one of the two. The funny thing is, because you're, um, you know, Bud is a huge, huge Friday the Thirteenth fan, and I'm a. I mean, I I love Friday the Thirteenth, but I've always been, a, you know, a Freddy fan. Um, so the first one I saw of Friday the Thirteenth was on Part Six. That was the very first one because I haven't watched them in order. I've kind of just skipped around right. to different ones. So. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're able to do that with those. Yeah, well, six is a good one too. A lot of people with, um, I think, six is great. Six is definitely one of the greats. Tom Tom McLaughlin's a friend of mine. He's, he's fantastic. Oh, I, I love. You know what I love about six? It was so fun and when it came out in '86. <clears throat> excuse me. I was about ten years old, and. You know, four had happened, and, and, you know, Jason was gone. Five had come out, but as we know, spoilers, it wasn't Jason. But when six came out, Jason lives. We all knew he was coming back. And I had had my mother at the time call the local video store, and they, they put in a call to my house when it came in. <laughs> and I remember she, I literally was like, let's go. It was like an emergency. I mean, and I went, I couldn't get that tape in there quick enough. And I was almost in tears when he came out of that grave. For a lot of us, it was like, yeah, and it was such a fun movie without being, without mocking the character. Yeah, no, was six, is, six is definitely one of my favorites. It was just a phenomenally fun movie, and I thought that um, Tom Matthews was great as, as Tommy, taking over that role from, from uh, John Shepard in five. And uh, so, yeah, I thought it was seamless. I thought he was great. I thought he fit the role really well for the type of movie that it was. His personality fit that. So, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Then we had seven. We had Kane Hunter. After that, it goes on and on. And hopefully, as you said, Larry, they'll be able to resolve this at some yes. point. I'm not going to hold it. It doesn't sound very <laughs> hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually, eventually, there'll be more. It has to come to an end. I mean, now <laughs> no one's doing anything, so everything's on hold. Well, we are. We're keeping it alive, and you're helping <laughs> to do that, Larry. 
And again, I want to thank you, Larry, um, for, for just being so pliable as well and, and easy to deal with and coming on and really, uh, you know, being a treat, as you always are. And we'll do it again before three years. Okay, um, great. Before three years this time. So okay. <laughs> again, I, I thank you so much, Larry. For yeah. Okay, good. And thank you. Thanks for having me. Do you let Larry let everybody know where to find you? Because um, you okay. you're really active on Twitter okay. and social media. So let everyone know where to find you. Yeah, so uh, on Twitter, it's uh, at Zerner Law for the legal stuff. I have also at Larry Zerner for the acting stuff or the personal stuff. So you can follow both. And uh, yeah, that's where, that's where I am. Awesome. <laughs> and you can find Larry again in Friday the 13th. Part three, 1982, is Shelly Finkel's team, the Apple Luffle, uh, and wonderful Shelly. Go check him out, and check out uh, Knights of Bad Askham. Yes. Yeah, well, we'll go and Larry's going to have some stuff in the future as well, and I know that. And I will definitely stay in touch, Larry. I love you, buddy. Thank you so much for coming on again. And uh, again, we'll definitely, definitely Yeah, talk. thank you All so right. much. All right, bud, you want to go ahead and do your shout-outs then? I sure will. Again, August 22nd, air date of the show, 2020. Again, I want to thank Shelly Finkelstein, a.k.a. Larry Zerner, is that vice versa? We don't know. It blends together. Thank you so <laughs> much. We're going to see Larry in the future. I know that. We're going to have him on again. Uh, to Rianne and Nicole Zombie Barbie, I love you. You work so hard. So much goes into this, and it's so rewarding, right? Yes. This is the fun part of all the back-on-scenes stuff. It's great. To my wife, Allison, I love you, baby. Thank you for being bored. My boys, uh, Mason and Carter, thank you. Everybody out there. My Brook Village crew outside of Boston. Everybody, chins up. It ain't over till you say it's over, in, And I ain't heard no bell. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to thank you, know, you, bud, for being my co-host and agreeing to come on and do this with me. I can't do it without you, and I'm so, so grateful for it. Thank you, Larry, for coming on. You were so much fun. It was great to hear the stories of how you got the part and just everything that you did, and it's amazing. So thank you again. Um, and I don't have a hockey mask, damn it. <laughs> um, I want to thank My Indie Productions. for. Um, I'm a featured artist on there, and they support all indie films, um, directors, writers, producers, musicians, just all kinds of people. So check out My Indie Productions. Um, Johnny Daggers for doing our intro and our artwork for the intro. Uh, Chris Atella for doing the outro music and then the intro and outro for iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Um, also check out uh, Horror with Sir Sturdy. He's a fellow podcaster, amazing friend, great podcaster, loves horror. And with that, I am done. And thank you guys so much. Thanks. All right. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>